I'm in sound and I saw Modern Times. It is directed and written and stars Charlie Chaplin. And if you haven't seen this movie, I will spoil it for you. This was requested by a Patreon if like the fast track movie review. You can do that for $20 redeemers, patreon.com slash ASU presents, all with the review. This movie starts when we're following a bunch of people in a factory and we have Charlie Chaplin, he has a toothbrush mustache. He looks suspiciously like Hitler, not gonna lie. I feel like this has to be a thing. This is 1936, this is the middle of the depression. I don't know anything about history, but was it like Hitler coming up and be like, ah, oh, I'm, I'm the one of the people and you guys all like me. This is before the war, I think. So, you know, it's interesting, interesting observation that I had, but we have Charlie Chaplin over here. This is a silent movie except for when the boss speaks or something. I'm not exactly sure why it's silent in some parts and then not in other parts. Like there's some talkie lines and then there's like these screens that explain some dialogue. Maybe the Charlie Chaplin didn't want to speak or something and this guy did. I don't know, man. I don't know why. It seems a little bit inconsistent with the production. But we have Charlie Chaplin. He seems like he's just like freaking out. He's at the factory job. He's freaking out. He's doing the bolt cutters, not bolt cutters. It's like a bolt tighteners or something on a specific compartment. And this is a very slapsticky kind of film because he does a lot of tightening and then the conveyor belt gets faster and he gets less and less in time. And his boss is like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Be over here. And he like gets distracted and gets behind even more. I'm like, well, freaking the boss, you're distracting him. Stop distracting him, you know? This is why he's freaking out all over the place. And so he leaves the station after a while. He fr uh, then he starts like destroying the factory. He blows up. He doesn't blow up the factory before lunch though. Oh, look at this beautiful device. We got like a company who's like, hey, we have this device to make it so your workers don't have to take a lunch at all and they can just keep on working and eat at the same time and I'm like first of all bad labor practices but more secondly I think that this is some sort of satire on the working industry back in the day this is during the Great Depression nobody had jobs or at least I, I think it was 25% had no job I don't remember the actual number but like you know Great Depression not everybody's jobless no one has jobs and so we have the top honchos, the bosses are like, how can we make sure that we don't have to pay our people for their lunch break? We just want efficiency. We need to keep on going. We need to keep on working. So we have this device. It's a horrible device. Let's demonstrate it on Chaplin. It's a nice little shot of him, right? He's getting fed stuff. This machine is working. And then we have the corn cob machine. And then once the corn cob machine goes, it's like, oh, it's working. Oh no, it's not working actually. Oh, keeps on spinning uncontrollably. Oh no, it's grinding against his teeth. Oh no, and then it starts like hitting him. I think this is the moment in the movie which I laughed the most because it's just hilarious. It keeps stopping and then it continues again, just slams him. And we have like operator trying to fix it and like the corn cob just keeps on spinning fast and it keeps hitting him in the mouth that I thought it was really funny. So we have him getting fired. And so he's like out on the street. And he's like, oh, yeah, whatever, I'm out on the street. And he picks up a flag. Oh no, your flag, it fell off the side. Dude, here, here's your flag. And then there's like a protest. And then he gets arrested because he's a suspected communist. And so he gets put in the jail. He's in jail and he's able to walk out of jail. <laughs> He's able to walk out of jail and then he's like, oh wait, actually, I, I gotta go back in. And then he stops a coup from happening from the prisoners taking over the guards. And he stops that and gets released out of jail, right? And then he gets out of jail and then he gets put back into jail for doing another... It's not even a crime. He just is just walking around and then he's chasing this woman or something because he's like trying to get a job. And then he gets put back into jail. Then he gets out of jail. They put... I think... It's during the entirety of this movie, he gets put back in jail and put in jail again, back out of jail, in jail again. He meets this homeless lady. She lost her home because some guys are like, ah, ah, you're going to get out of here. She even had like a child and everything. She had a, a shack, but she couldn't pay, afford to pay for it. So of course, she's now homeless. She's dancing in the street, rendezvousing with Chaplin. She steals bread. He actually goes to jail for her. He's like, I'm the one who stole the bread. And then the cops take him away. And then someone actually did see her steal the bread. They're like, no, but she stole the bread, get him. And then he's just like left there, right? Oh boy, this is an interesting movie because at some point he gets sick and tired of being in jail. He's like, I wanna, 
earn my way again. I want to earn a house. So he goes back to a job. She gets a job and he gets a job. She gets a job as a show lady and he gets a job as a waiter. And, oh man, this is so comical. He's trying to get this guy who's duck. And in the middle, there's just like a bunch of people just dancing. He gets caught in it to the point where there's a chandelier which has a hook on it and his roasted duck gets caught on that. And then he gets to the table finally and the roasted duck is gone. And then the roasted duck is there. Actually, it falls on his plate. He's like, okay, here you go. Oh, these working conditions suck. If this is some sort of satire on the society back in 1936, when this movie came out, then I can see it. I can totally see it. It makes sense. This is 90 years ago, dating this episode right now. It's 2024, almost 90 years since this movie came out. I gotta say, I think it still applies. People are still trying to find ways to not pay for people's lunch breaks. <coughs> Fast food restaurants, <coughs> corporation. <coughs> Sorry, I got something caught in my throat there. Anyway, so we got this guy and he's like, I'm gonna work. And I'm gonna get myself a house. He gets fired, she does not. She has a bunch of money. And I'm like, okay, you guys gotta go find and choose a house. So they choose a house, they find a house. It's just some burnt down house. It's kind of rinky dinky. It's not, it's not doing well. Any movement of any sort. Oh, let's just move this thing. Bop, hits him with the head on the wood. Wood in the head, he's got a, a wooden noggin. And then more fun things such as she moves a broom and the entire roof caves in and you have to put the room back. It's just leave it how it is, just leave it how it is. Oh, you like this house, well, we want a better house. We want to work for a house, right? And I'm like, okay, hopefully you guys can find some sort of way to have a house, right? Are you guys gonna be able to work? No, she gets fired, he gets fired. And it's like, okay, they're gonna have a ha happy dandy day. They're just gonna walk down the street with all their stuff. And that's the end of the movie. And I'm like, this is interesting. This is funny. Honestly, the comedies and movies don't mix normally for me. Like I personally don't like comedy movies cause I feel like the comedy is just a lot of humor that would appeal to someone who has a, a IQ of a seven year old. Like, oh, ha, 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 slapstick, ah, ha, 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 right? That's like my experience with modern comedies. But this comedy was pretty funny because it felt satirical. And it was so well done by Chaplin. He really put a lot of effort into it. And I didn't know that he could sing and dance until he sung and danced at the club. And I'm like, what? And also he's singing in some sort of foreign language that I don't know of, but everybody keeps laughing. And he says punchlines. I could tell he's saying punchlines, but everyone's laughing and I don't know what he's saying. And he's just doing the ba 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 da 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 And he pauses. I don't remember the lyrics. I don't remember the lyrics, but I do remember the melody. It was like a polka or something. Anyway, I like this movie a lot. I think it was a fun movie. I'm glad I watched it. It's a nice satire. It's a nice slapstick. The slapstick is funny because it's just so much of it. It just keeps on going. I think it gets funnier the longer and longer it gets going. And the more and more time he gets put into jail, it gets funnier. It's like, stop getting into jail. How are you getting into jail so much? The acting is top notch. The performance, then the coordination. There's just so many one shots to this. And it's so impressive and like, this is amazing. This is beautiful. It takes so much dedication, so much time that I have to give this like an eight out of 10. If you like this review, watch another one. The platform really likes that. If you want a fast track movie review, you can do that for $20 redinos at patreon.com slash ASC presents. And if you like to help support the daily grindiness of all them daily movie reviews, go to this link tree, find the way you can help support the daily grind of all them daily movie reviews. So go here. And until next time, I'm in salad sauce. See you later, my sour croutons and bacon bits.